Bender Little. When I teach indexing, I am almost always asked questions about table partitioning in SQL Server. Can we use table partitioning to speed up our queries? Is it like indexing, but just better? Well, the answer is no. Table partitioning isn't going to speed up the performance of your queries by itself. And I realize this is a little disappointing because table partitioning is an enterprise feature and it sounds like it's gonna be magic. Just sprinkle a little table partitioning on and everything is faster, right? Well, not everything. There's a couple of cases where table partitioning really shines and it can help make certain kinds of things much faster, but it doesn't make your queries run faster and in fact can make your queries slower. If you implement table partitioning, you may have to do a lot of work just to make your queries as fast as they were before you implemented the partitioning. So let's look at where table partitioning shines, why it can cause problems for query performance, and some more considerations about where you might want to use it. So we're going to start off with an article by Gail Shaw. Gail is a, I like to describe her as a SQL Server badass. She's a Microsoft certified master and a consultant. And she wrote this post back in 2012 in response to comments she saw on the forum and from students who said, hey, I partitioned my table, but my queries aren't any faster. This is a really great, rich article with a lot of detail in it, but we're gonna start with the part of the article where she says, well, what is partitioning good for? She says it doesn't make your queries faster, but hey, here's, here's where it's excellent. These diagrams, I love these diagrams. So this shows the transactions table. The table currently has data in it for January to July, and it's partitioned by month. The staging table is currently empty. What table partitioning allows you to do is load up August data in that staging table. Meanwhile, the August is just in the staging table. It is actually a separate table. People are querying the transactions table and they just see January to July. They're working, working away. While you are getting all the data in there, you can you know, insert, update, do whatever you need to do. Create all of the indexes to match the transactions table. And then when you are ready, you can switch in August data into the main table in a very quick metadata only operation. It does not have to copy the data. It just says, hey, bink, you are suddenly part of the transactions table. And now people who are querying the table after the switch in suddenly see all of August data. You didn't have to insert into the live table. And inserting into the live table is a real pain because you may have locking and blocking people with the people who are reading from it. The people who are reading from it may also only see part of August data while you're inserting it into the table. And that might be wrong, right? They might misunderstand things, get wrong if all sorts of problems can happen. Table partitioning totally solves that by letting you switch that chunk of data in. Similarly, Table partitioning allows you to switch whole chunks of data out as this metadata only operation. Let's say we don't need January's data in the table anymore because we just, you know, we're, it doesn't, it shouldn't go that far back. January's data can be switched out to a partition and suddenly it is just not visible to the reports anymore. We can truncate it. We can do whatever we want with it from that table that we switched out to. Now it is true that when we switch in or switch out, we require an exclusive lock against the table to do this, but it's fast if we, as, as long as we can get that lock, it is very fast because it isn't actually moving or copying the data. It is a metadata only operation. So for I need to move a chunk of data in or move a chunk of data out, table partitioning is excellent and can vastly improve the user experience and limit the amount of locking, blocking, and contention that your table has. That is really, really awesome. But that isn't the same thing as just speeding up your queries all the time, right? We maybe during that period where you usually load the table, the queries appear to be fat, they, they, are, they are faster, but it's just that they aren't having the locking and blocking issues. 
it's not that they have a magically better execution plan or that they're going to be faster all the time, right? It's not a secret, and this isn't something that, um, you know, I, I think that table partitioning has really long just been misunderstood. Because here's, here's an example of a question on Stack Overflow where the questioner is asking about, can I implement partitioning for query performance in SQL Server 2008? I want to make my queries faster. Will partitioning help me? And this question was answered by a fellow named Remus Rusanu, who's uh, wonderful on Stack Overflow and also at the time was a member of the SQL Server development team. He, helps, he helped write SQL Server. He starts off his answer with a, a very clear statement. Partitioning is not done for query performance. You don't partition a table just to make your queries faster. It can help with other things like we were just talking about. He gives the switch in, switch out ETL example. He also points out something that I believe Gail also points out that partitioning will allow you to put different partitions on different file groups and you can put those different file groups on, on different pieces of storage. So for example, let's say I want different physical disks under uh, January's data versus July's data because I don't want them just sharing the same disk spindles. I can do that by having my partitions assigned to separate file groups and at the storage level having separate disks with RAID under different file groups. Now that IO path, this is called the IO path control case. This one is not really as compelling anymore because more and more now people are buying SANs and storage devices that the storage device itself will use tiering and optimize what parts of the storage are used for what data by how frequently that data is accessed. In other words, SANs are starting to manage, okay, well, let's put the best storage behind the parts of the data that are really important to you, just based on your use patterns so that you don't have to do things like assign different file groups to different parts of your storage. So that is just not, not quite as compelling to most folks anymore, but it is a use case for it. Now, Remus does mention one case, which I think is interesting. He says there is a narrow case for partitioning, this, this isn't really a um, optimizing the query plan as much as it's avoiding something called latch contention. Now, when I talked about Gail's post, I already talked about avoiding locking and blocking. Latch contention is at a different level. Latch contention is fighting over a page that is in memory. Sometimes we have systems that are have such high insert rates that inserting all the data into a traditional index can lead to not even being able to uh, get to the page in memory fast enough and it can slow down specifically insert operations. So we're not talking about speeding up select queries. We're talking really about inserts here. He links to a, uh, an article written by the SQL customer advisory team. This has been changed into a white paper and this is page 37 of the 52 page white paper. <laughs> so it's pretty extensive. It gives you, this is a, a pretty rare case that folks run into. I would say this is like 0.5% or less of people. Most folks run into bottlenecks way before they ever run into latch contention. So the, the early parts of the white paper are a lot of queries that just say, here's how to even figure out if this is your problem, because it's probably not your problem, right? This affects very few people. But I think it's actually interesting the, the notes they put on, okay, well, for this solution, which is one of a couple different solutions they say for it, like you could use a um, solution that doesn't involve partitioning to get around this. But the option for using partitioning to distribute the inserts throughout the table, they list the advantages and the disadvantages for it, which are interesting to read. One of the disadvantages for this is they, they note that if you are essentially um, kind of hashing out your inserts and forcing them to be distributed through the table by partitioning, you're, you're forcing a randomization of your inserts, that way that you partition a table is going to essentially prevent you from ever taking advantage of a different partitioning scheme that you might set up so that you could switch data in or switch data out. 
right? Because a, a randomized scheme, we're not going to probably, well, probably, we're not going to want to switch out a random chunk of data from the table or switch in a random chunk of data from the table. They mention also query performance can have problems. We can have partition elimination issues, meaning queries may not be able to go just to a few partitions. Queries may have to scan more of the table than you would want them to, and you may have problems optimizing your queries. In other words, we may have to do some query rewriting work to speed up queries, and also adding a persisted computed column can have, can have some issues with it because they're doing the persisted computed column to, to randomize the inserts. So even in saying, hey, in these rare cases for these rare folks, we could improve the performance of inserts, you may have some query optimization issues to hit. A really simple example of the query optimization issues is in this connect bug. This was filed back, if you look at the date, this is coming to you back from 2006. So, hey, we may hit the 10 year birthday of this bug later this year. And this one ha is um, fairly well known by folks who use partitioning because min, max, and top queries are what this concerns, and those are fairly common. I uh, met some folks at a recent SQL Saturday. We were talking about partitioning, and they said, yeah, we implemented partitioning for one of our uh, major tables, and we noticed that some of our nightly jobs just slowed down massively after it was implemented. We had to do a bunch of work and we narrowed it down to, I believe it was a max query. And they were like, yeah, this query used to be incredibly fast. Once we put the partitioning in, it was really slow because these tables are really large. We had to do a bunch of work to figure out how to make that faster. I showed them this bug. They hadn't actually found the bug, like searching on keywords, you've got to use, you got to know the exact right keywords to search to find the bug. But the bug basically is, Folks who, uh, and I'll click on the comments here, if you scroll all the way down, you can see uh, the original comment, which is basically saying, after I partition a table, I would expect on a non-clustered index that if I run a max query against the leading column in that non-clustered index, even if the table is partitioned by a different column, I would think that the optimizer should be able to know, hey, I may have to check every partition, but at least I can seek to the end of that chunk of index in that partition. Instead, I'm finding that it's reading all of the rows in all of the partitions, in, and it shouldn't have to. It is so much slower than it used to be before we partitioned it. Why isn't the optimizer smarter about this? And there are, as you read through these, folks are finding this is causing me a lot of pain. And that Microsoft is responding throughout this. The highlighted uh, responses are from Microsoft, but people commenting on the bug, they keep checking in new versions to say, is it fixed now? And they, they are getting frustrated. It is still not fixed. Although if you click on the workarounds tab, there is a workaround that you can use essentially with a T-SQL rewrite. Now, if you look at this T-SQL rewrite, this is not the this is not natural T-SQL that you would just expect to write. You may not even know yet about the you know specialized functions for partitioning, but essentially you can get these queries to optimize better. It may just require some kind of contortions and T-SQL yoga um, to, to get it done. And that's when, when folks implement partitioning, a lot of them believe it's going to be just transparent and they won't have to optimize their queries for it. That is not the case. Is implementing partitioning worth it? Well, yeah, if that switching in and switching out is really, um, helpful for you, it can be worth it. Absolutely. But it isn't just incredibly easy. <laughs> <laughs> to, to do, and you do want to test your queries. The next example of a query problem is one that I wrote on the Brent Ozar Unlimited blog. This is from 25th September 2015. And I found an example uh, that I thought was really interesting with just the Stack Overflow sample database. And I'm not going to go into too much of the, of the details of the issue, but what I found was an example of a query where the non-partitioned version of the query 
was able to use a stream aggregate operator in the execution plan. And a stream aggregate operator assumes that the data coming into it is sorted and it is nice and fast. As soon as I partitioned that non-clustered index, SQL Server wasn't able to use the stream aggregate operator anymore because data was now sorted by the non-clustered index key, but partitioned into chunks by the partitioning key. This messed up. I mean, it, it works as design, but it changes the way that the index is actually ordered. So SQL Server had to now use a hash match operator or put a giant sort operator into the plan. The hash match operator is better than sorting, resorting the entire index, but it is slower than the stream aggregate operator. In other words, partitioning my indexes changes the structure of the indexes and the optimizer actually has to do different things. And the things it does may be slower and you may need to either rewrite your query or in this case, I do have the option of saying, hey, I want to create a non-aligned index on this table. Now, going back to Gail Shaw's diagrams here on Simple Talk, I have the transactions table. It is partitioned by month. If I create an aligned non-clustered index on this table, let's say on, you know, transaction date, or no, let's not do transaction date. Let's do, um, let's do uh, transaction ID. It will be divided into chunks of those months as well. So that when I switch out a chunk of the table, it can take that from all the non-clustered indexes as well as the clustered index. Now I have the option to create a non-aligned non-clustered index and essentially say, hey, don't partition the non-clustered index on the date. Just create a simple B tree like you would if the table wasn't partitioned on transaction ID. But the problem is, as soon as I create that non-aligned non-clustered index, I can't switch data out of the table anymore. I can't switch data into the table anymore. Before I can do that, I have to disable any non-aligned non-clustered index so that everything that's currently enabled is partitioned and in easily identifiable chunks. I can then do my switching and then I have to rebuild my non-aligned indexes. The non-aligned index may take a very long time to rebuild, may consume a lot of IO and CPU. It's going to be extra locking at the end. And of course, Nobody can use it while that non-clustered index is being rebuilt. It can't be used because it's, it's being built because it was disabled. So we, we've kind of defeated the whole reason we did partitioning in the first place. When you're doing partitioning, you really want to avoid those non-aligned indexes because they take, they take the beauty out of it. They take the amazing benefit out of the partitioning, which really has that great strength for being able to switch data around. Now, partitioning isn't going to go away. I'm going to end on an article here. This is a Books Online uh, article on clustered column store indexes. It's a very cool new feature for uh, compressing and speeding up uh, typically tables with many, lots and lots of rows. And partitioning is still, for even these new types of table, a, a great tool for management of the tables. They point out that using partitioning with these column store tables can help you rebuild parts of the table to reclaim, uh, you, uh, reclaim uh, empty space and to optimize the clustered column store table. So for managing our data and for optimizing how we um, keep that data healthy and what data is available to us, partitioning will continue to be an excellent, valuable tool in SQL Server just don't be fooled by thinking that it's the solution to your query performance issues. Thanks for joining me today.